So welcome to another video, I'm The Naked Doc. And this month of September, we're doing the NICU Awareness Month series. Last week, we talked a little bit about if you're a new parent coming into the NICU, what you should expect, what you can or can't do, who are the people around you. If you haven't seen that video, please go ahead and you know click right up here. Nelly Figueroa on YouTube asked a question if I could explain a little bit about SIMV or modes of ventilation. So I'm gonna go ahead and break it down. She is a nurse and so I'm gonna be really breaking this down uh, specifically for nurses, medical students, residents to kind of get a better understanding of the type of ventilations uh, that we have and just get, this is gonna be fairly basic. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. So we're gonna talk about mechanical ventilation first. Then we're gonna be talking about non-invasive ventilation and then at the end, please stick around because I am gonna be talking about the gases. So when we talk about the ABG and your CBG, how do you actually read? How do you go through that? What is, which one is the pH? Which one is the PaO2 and what they actually mean? So stick around to the end so you can actually get the whole kind of sense of you know, gases and how we kind of look at those as clinicians. But before that, let's go ahead and talk specifically about mechanical ventilation and non-invasive ventilation CPAP. All right, let's get to today's video. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets, teaching the families, bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. So let's talk about mechanical ventilation. Basically mechanical ventilation is being able to give a breath to the baby through a machine and we do this through a breathing tube. So obviously the babies need to be intubated, need to have a plastic you know, tube in the trachea to be able to receive this most of ventilation. There are new studies looking at different ways of delivering ventilation without a plastic tube, without an endotracheal tube, but we won't talk about that in this uh, topic today. So let's talk about mechanical ventilation. The type of mechanical ventilators, and there's different types, basically are able to do three things they have what are called, what I call TLC, and that is a trigger, a limit, and a cycle. The trigger is basically how you're delivering that breath to the baby. You can do it as a flow, meaning you're constantly giving air. You can do it as pressure, pushing air into it. And we'll talk a little bit about all these things. So then the limit is how much of that breath are you giving and how do you control that size of that breath. And finally, the cycle is how do you end that breath that you began you know, giving through the limit. So we'll talk a little bit about this as we go through talking about the modes. In the modes, you can basically deliver whatever breath you're giving through pressure or through volume. When you're talking about volume modes, there are basically two main ones, and this is SIMV or synchronized intermittent mechanical ventilation. Again, we'll break this down, so you know, don't, don't fret too much. And then there's also assist control. So, synchronized intermittent mechanical ventilation is basically telling you that this is synchronized, meaning when the baby decides to take a breath, the machine actually determines that the baby is taking a breath. It does this because it realizes there's negative flow, the baby is beginning a flow and it goes ahead and gives the determined respiratory rate that you have set at a certain amount for a minute. So let me explain myself. If we are giving uh, uh, 20 breaths per you know, minute for this baby, if your respiratory rate is 20 that you've set on the ventilator, that means that 20 times a minute, the, the machine is gonna wait for the baby to go ahead and take a breath. And when it does, it stimulates that breath at whatever pressure you set. Now, some of you will ask, well, what if the baby doesn't take a breath? Well, the machine has a certain time that is set that if the baby does not take a breath, it goes ahead and takes a, a breath for the baby. So if the baby is completely paralyzed, not initiating any breaths at all, you know that for sure you're gonna be getting the 20 breaths within that minute. If the baby is taking extra breaths, you can do a couple of things. And we'll get to that right now. 
In uh, SIMV, you can go ahead and set an extra mode, if you will, which is called pressure supported ventilation. And this is done through flow. Don't worry about exactly how it's done. But what essentially it means is that if you are on a rate of 20, you set your respiratory rate at 20, you can actually now add pressure supported breaths, which means that when the baby takes a breath beyond the 20 that you've determined, so if the baby is breathing 30 times a minute, 20 of those are going to be delivered with the pressures that you set. And then 10 of those extra ones that, that the, what the baby is taking as far as breaths, those are going to be uh, given as a pressure supported breath. Ten usually you tend to use a pressure that's a little bit lower. So I'm going to throw out some numbers. So we've talked about the, in SIMV, you go ahead and choose your rate. So in this case, we're going to go with a rate of 20. So 20 times a minute, the machine will deliver that breath. Then you set something called a peak inspiratory pressure. And that is the pressure that's going to be basically the maximum pressure that, that you're going to, that the machine's going to deliver to the baby to open up the lung. And you can set it. We're going to go with, for this example, let's just say at 18. And then you go ahead and choose your PEEP, which is positive end expiratory pressure. What that is, is with your PEEP, you've opened up the lung, and when the lung begins to relax, you have an underlying positive end expiratory pressure, which is a continuous pressure keeping the lung from collapsing. So you open the lungs with your PEEP, and when the lung relaxes, it doesn't completely close because you've got a positive end expiratory pressure that keeps that open and then it's ready for the next breath. So we're gonna use a number again. We've used a PIP of 18, we'll go with a PEEP of six. You use your 18 and then at six, it stops right there. The lung doesn't collapse. Next breath, 18, six, 18, six. Did you hear the one about that scarecrow that won that award? It was said he was outstanding in the field. Okay, so you set your PIP, you set your PEEP. Now you go ahead and set your pressure supported ventilation. We've already done the PIP, which is 18. We're doing a PEEP of six. And then just imagine when you use a pressure supported ventilation of eight. So what that means is that 20 times a minute, the baby will get this 18 over six, 18 over six pressures. But if the baby breathes over, the 20 times a minute, let's just say it breathes 30 times a minute, then 10 of those breaths are gonna be, and if you set it at eight, are gonna be your peep, which is six, and then on top of that, you're gonna have eight on top of that. So for those 10 extra breaths that are not with a pip, you are actually gonna see the ventilator and that what the lungs are actually gonna see are gonna be a 14 over six, 14 over six. So you set that eight plus your six. So that's the, where that 14 is coming from. It's basically like a smaller pip, if you will. And it's coming only from the breaths on top of what you've already set. Let's say you set your respiratory rate at 40 and the baby breathes 30 times a minute. Then you know that for sure you're going to be getting 40 times a minute that 18 over 6, 18 over 6, 18 over 6. You're not going to use your pressure supported ventilation. Another example of that is a baby that may have gone to the operating room, comes back completely paralyzed. Well, you know, you're not going to be receiving any pressure supported ventilation because the baby's not going to be taking any breaths. So you set it at 30, the baby's going to get those 30 breaths and that's it. So that's how SIMV works. Now let's go ahead and compare that to assist control. Why should you never trust a baby chick? Because her talk is cheap. Okay, comparing assist control now to SIMV. In assist control, I kind of always teach that the way to remember assist control is that you are assisting and controlling every single breath of the baby. So we're going to use the same example we did for SIMV. If the baby is set at a respiratory rate of 20, but the baby breathes 30, now your PIP and your PEEP are going to be delivered 
no matter how many times you set your rate, it's gonna be delivered at whatever the baby breathes. So if your baby is breathing 30 or 40 times a minute, even if you put your respiratory rate at 20, it's gonna get those 40 breaths at the 18 over six, 18 over six that you set. If the baby breathes 30 times a minute, 30 times a minute, it's gonna get 18 over six, no matter what you actually put on your rate. This is a really important concept to understand when you're talking about trying to wean a baby off. If you're trying to come down on you know, whatever support you're giving, if you have a baby who is breathing 40 times a minute and you put them on a respiratory rate of 20 on the ventilator on assist control, if you were to drop your rate from 20 to 15, it sounds like you're actually weaning, you're going down on what you said on the ventilator, but since the baby is breathing 40 times a minute, that machine, regardless of what number you actually went down to, is gonna deliver that 40 times a minute in assist control. That's very different if you're on this IMV. In, if you're on this IMV at a rate of 20 and you decide to put that rate down to 15, what that means now is if the baby is breathing 40 times a minute and before you were on a rate of 20, then 20 of those extra ones were smaller pressures of your pressure support. Remember we talked about those 14 over six instead of having to do the 18 over six. 20 of those extra breaths are 14 over six. They're delivered by pressure support. If you now decrease your rate by five, going from a rate of 20 to 15, now more pressure supported breaths are gonna be given. Now you're gonna go 25 times a minute, you're getting lower pressures of 14 over six. And now you've gone down before you were getting 20 times a minute, those 18 over six breaths. Now you're only getting 15 18 over six breaths. That means now the baby's gonna have to work a little bit more and it gives you an indication if this baby's lungs are pretty sick and you've weaned and your gas goes in the wrong direction, not where you want it to go, or your oxygen, you know, you're having to go up on your oxygen or we're having desaturations and you know the baby wasn't ready, it was trying to work a little harder, it wasn't ready, you need to, you know, make, it, make, make a change or it will actually get the baby to work a little harder. And I kind of joke about going to the respiratory gym. You really get the baby's muscles to be a little bit stronger, a, bit, a little bit working a little bit harder. So then why would you choose assist control over SIMV or SIMV or assist control? They each have their benefits. One of the things that SIMV is really good, and I already mentioned it, is that it really helps for you to be able to start weaning and allow the baby to do a little bit more on its own. It gives you an indication of how much the baby can do on its own. You can use it to kind of get the baby ready and prepped and start getting a little bit stronger. And it can also give you an indication how sick the lungs are. As you begin to wean, it gives you an indication that the baby is having to do more and it can't make it, therefore you've got sicker lungs or vice versa. In the assist control, you have obviously the benefit that every single breath, it's gonna be delivered exactly how you want it. And it is synchronized to the baby's breaths. But if you have a baby who is breathing extremely fast, it will actually follow every, it will actually assist and control every single breath. So if a baby is breathing 100 times, 120 times a minute, it's gonna give those pressures that you've set 120 times a minute. And these can lead to two things. You can have, you're holding on to CO2 because it doesn't, it didn't give enough time between a, each breath for the baby to blow out the CO2. Remember a whole cycle is you take a nice deep breath in and you blow it out. If you're going so fast at that level of pressure, you're blowing a lot of air in and you just don't have enough time to blow that out. So for a baby that's really breathing fast, assist control is not the way to go. You really wanna switch them at that point to SIMV. Assist control, however, is really good if a, ba if a baby is paralyzed or if the baby it has some neuromuscular disorder, something where it can't really you know, breathe on its own, then that's the mode to be able to keep them constant. You know you're gonna be getting those breaths every single time at a certain time and minute, and everyone is gonna be supported. So that's how it kind of helps you choose. For the small babies, I tend to go with SIMV, just because again, it allows you to control and see where their lungs are at. And for any, pro any baby that has problems with neurological issues or paralyzed, then I usually go with assist control. 
the place where or or in situations i should say where it doesn't make a difference i've kind of already alluded to one is if you're completely paralyzed then basically your assist control and your simv are pretty much the same if you put a baby on a rate of 30 and you're paralyzed you're going to get 30 breaths in assist control and you're going to get 30 breaths in simv same pressures not going to make a difference another situation is if you have simv and you put him for example on we talked about the 18 over 6, your PIP of 18 and your PEEP over 6. And then you go ahead and add that pressure support we already talked about. Well, if your pressure support is, let's say, 12, then because you're giving that 12 over your 6, their total pressures are going to be 18. So you may be getting 18 over 6, 18 over 6, 20 times a minute. And if the baby's breathing 30 times a minute, those extra 10 are going to be your 12 pressure support, you said, plus your 6. So it's also going to be 18 over 6, 18 over 6. That means every single breath on that SIMV will be giving at a pressure of 18 over 6, which is exactly what assist control does. Every single breath is given at whatever you set 18 over 6 so that's where it doesn't really work and so you have to think about maybe decreasing your pressure support so you really get the benefits of doing simv all right so i know this may seem a little confusing and it's it's, it's a hard concept to understand at, at first but if you just you know look back at the video go through the examples write them down you know and every obviously if you guys have questions put them in the comment section i'll answer them so that's the sort of the difference between simv and assist control and let's go ahead and talk a little bit about whether we do this using pressure or using volume dad dad is this pool safe for me to jump in son it deep ends <laughs> Mm-hmm.